my whole life, I know I'm good and all that stuff, but at the college level, like why? Like why I'm a three star? Like why my name? Like, like why people ain't talking about me and stuff? So I feel like that was my mindset going to college my freshman year. It's to make a name for myself. That three star gonna be the best. First day at Auburn, I was excited. Um, like, I Google like, everything about Auburn football. I, like, they little highlights before the game. Like, they used, I think they had a documentary like, on their games and stuff and all that. I watched all of them the whole season, trying to see what I'm gonna get myself into. It was a great feeling, like, just being at your new home, seeing new faces that you know they're gonna treat you well, you know you in good hands and everything. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm here. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what they looking like looking me for, but I'm here. I'm gonna do anything they tell me to do. So that's how I was with, with fall camp and everything. I just try to like make it through. Just try to make it through, try to prove people wrong. It's my first time playing corner, so I had a lot to learn. I use my resources. I talk to the older guys, tell them what they need, like what I need to do. I looked at them, see the technique that they did and everything. That first game had we played against Washington, I, I didn't play. I was happy, I ain't gonna lie. I was a little happy because I was scared. I didn't know what I was gonna do. So I, I was a little happy we won and everything. Going to the second game, we were playing against Alabama State. His first time hitting the field, he told me he had bubble guts. That would kill me. <laughs> he told me he felt like he, in a way he said he felt like, I'm feel like I'm finna boo boo on myself. <laughs> so it blow me. I'm like, bubbles up. I got butterflies. I got the bubble guts. All these folks staring at me. I was, and you know me, I'm like, just calm down, breathe. You know what I'm saying? You knew this was gonna happen. Like, who else do they supposed to be looking at? You out there on the field, of course they gonna look at you and watch you. I was on the sideline, I already knew I was gonna get in. We, we blew them out, so they put me in early. I was doing I was doing good. I feel like it was great for me to play in that game. It's my first time and everything. I was doing good. They threw the ball towards me. I, I did good, I did a little deflection, getting a little confidence. Later on, they threw it to the same dude I got scored on. Davis, a shot towards the end zone. McCreary covering again, but in the corner. That ball is caught, touchdown. When that happened, I was like, oh my goodness, he just scored on me. And I, 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 felt, I felt the heat on me. I'm like, dang, I know everybody mad at me, but we blowing them out. That's just how I think. Like, I'm so, like, I, I be mad at myself. Like, dang, bro. Everybody happy. I'm still, I got scored on, man. I'm like, I'm mad. I was hard on myself. I started playing a game like Tennessee. That was another, another big game. I'm chilling on the sideline. The coach talking on the headset was like, Jamel, Jamel's gone. Roger, you up. I'm like, oh my goodness. The face, my heart just dropped. This is a big game. This game is close. My heart dropped. Dropped. They put me in first play. They did something to confuse me. Threw a D pass. It cussed me out. The next play. I went against a tall dude, I don't know who he was, like by 6'4". He laid me on my back. <laughs> it was just so horrible. Yes, it was very hard for me to sit in the bleachers and act like a parent instead of like a coach. <laughs> I couldn't go down to the edges and scream like I wanted to, but I was screaming at my mama or whoever was on the side of me, or uh, somebody just to tell him to do, that's not what he's supposed to be doing. <laughs> She'd be like, excuse me, that's my child. I got to get out there. I got to, I got to get out there. That's my child. I got to tell him he, he got to do better than that. Or he done a beautiful job. You know, she was still that mom that she was uh, in these high school games as well as college. I was down. I was like, it's college for me. <laughs> I was back at like my high school year. Like, Connor, I like, it's, it's bad. Like, I got, I, I got to get it right. My freshman year to my sophomore year, that was a huge improvement. Um, I became like one of the top like 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 corners as as deflection pass deflections my sophomore year. Hicks incomplete. He throws again to the outside jump ball incomplete. So. I was going against Jamar Chase the whole game. That was my biggest like challenge right down my sophomore year. And he scored the ball on me. Like 
it was time I did good, time he just catching on me, making it look easy. And that was the time they tried me and I caught a pick. That was my first college pick my sophomore year. And that was that was great. I mean, even though we lost, I, I was just excited. Like, as a plan against one of the top quarterbacks, that's a Heisman winner, and one of the top receiver, like that, that was great for me. Like catching that pick. I really think that game against LSU was sticks out to me, um, just because he was so young and that was a big stage, and we were on the road, and he had got beaten early in the in the game, and he didn't he didn't flinch. So I thought I thought you, you saw a kid that really grew during the game. So my junior year, I knew I was the number one corner. I knew I, that was my mindset. I'm the number one corner. A heck of a play call, but a great job by Auburn on the outside, Roger McCreary. He has studied the game at a, at a, at a, a big push to be a smart football player and understand his job as well as what how they're going to try to attack him. And so he's kind of taking it to the next level in that regard. And with that, his confidence is very, very high. And so when you got a skill set like he's got and you have high confidence, uh, then you tend to play pretty well. Right here, Roger. I ain't gonna put you in the water, right here. Right here, buddy, come closer. Mic check, Roger. Your Friday night rituals, talk about that a little bit. Um, Friday night rituals, I mean, you already know, I'm full play the baby beans every time. Every Friday before a game, I love it. I'll eat two plates of it. You already know. Where did that come from? What you mean? Like, did you do that in high school? Did did my whole life. Your whole life? Whole life, pork and beans in a can. What about the sugar? I'll cover up the whole beans with sugar. Mm -hmm. That's just one time. I know it don't be sweet enough for me. Mm -hmm. So I'll do it like about three more times and I'm good. Cover it up. So. The question is what everybody wants to know. How do your stomach feel after you eat all those baked beans? What you mean, man? I mean, like, growing up, I ain't gonna lie, I used to, I used to go to the bathroom a lot growing up. But, like, now I'm used to it, though. So I just, it's normal. Like, it's just regular food to me now. He wants them just like they are. The baked beans, he eat any beans. He don't discriminate. He ain't. I said, what kind of meat you want? Mm -mm, I don't want no meat, but the meat and the beans. <laughs> if you went to a barbecue with your family and there were no baked beans, what kind of scene would you call? I'll be mad. I won't even come. I'll leave. I won't even show up. They, they will already know why I left, because no baked beans. I did it before. So when you get married and your wife tells you you can't have baked beans, what would you do? She better know how to cook baked beans. I can't go with her. Well, you heard it from Roger Best. No baked beans, no Roger. <laughs> when Malzahn left, I, I noticed that a new coaching staff was going to come. It was going to be a lot of different changes. And I started calling around, and people was like, it, it's possible. Like, I can get drafted, like, fourth, third round, or something like that. And, like, that when I started thinking. Like, what should I do? I get to leave early, but I ain't graduate. I don't have no, no plan. Like, I always wanted a plan after football. My main thing of all of that was him graduating. That was my biggest part. Felicia is the type of mom that she always say, told Roger, Roger, it ain't about the pros. It's about you and your education. I didn't bring you this for because of uh, you know, a football game. She said, I brought you this for the beast something. And we got on the phone call as soon as I, you know, got the job and he was in that limbo. I mean, he was one of the first guys I called. We just went through some things and went through, you know, my teaching philosophy, my my vision for that room. And the beauty about it, he had a coach that coached him in high school that was a former player of mine, was Antonio Coleman. Um, who was kind of, you know, helping me with that situation on getting them uh, to come back to Auburn. If I come back, I can get a degree. Now there might be a draft stop, but I can help improve that, rise it up, and I become a way better and smarter player. So, oh, and there's a lot of people telling me you can leave and make the money. 
So that was a lot of pros and cons to both sides. But me going back to school, that was, I think, that was a smart decision. That was, that was thinking at that moment. I made my name at Auburn, so I'm like, I'm gonna stay there this one year. Like, I'm gonna just ride for Auburn. When he called me, he was like, I'm going back for my last year. I was more excited than him, I think. <laughs> I was more excited than anybody. But I tried to hold my composure and was like, okay, baby, yeah, that's what you need to do. If that's what you want to do, then that's what you need to do. And the whole time I'm screaming and jumping on the inside. I graduated that summer before my senior season. She was hard on me in class and everything and all that. I always a smart kid and stuff. So doing that, graduating, that was for my mom and she was excited. That was the biggest smile I ever seen my mom have and everything. <laughs> for him to actually walk across the stage and see it, uh, yeah, it was great. <laughs> oh, I think it was, I cried that day too. <laughs> and I don't even cry much, but I cried that day too. Starting college and everything, I looked up to a lot of amazing people and everything. They're great players and everything. Um, in Auburn, indoor, it got all All-Americans, like it had their names. Like the last cornerback was Carlton Davis. They had Carlos Rogers. They had Derrick Brown. Derrick Brown was the latest. So I used to always look at that a lot. I never said like they're gonna be me. I just look at it a lot because I didn't know what it tasted like to be like to make it up there. I didn't know truly what it was when I was looking at it. So like it was say like all these All Americans and stuff. I was like, damn, that's nice. Your name is like they name is up there on on this wall. So going to my senior season, I had goals. He picked up on everything extremely fast and what we said in the meeting and he was able to go out and execute. This coaching staff, they, they helped me to improve a lot as a player, made me more smarter. I was playing off man, man, it was like made me playing everywhere, so it was different. Well, I mean, the Iron Bowl, he put on the, what we like to call the clinic tape. I mean, one of the best man-to-man -man matchup games that you can possibly ask for any DB. Um, and to play that many snaps, and man-to-man -man coverage is, is hard to do. And he did it all the way to the last second of the game. It's incomplete, knocked away by Roger McCreary one more time. Young to throw to the Alabama boundary, down the sideline, and it's stacked away. Snap down, and the ball is blocked! Or no, they fake it, and it's incomplete! I feel like I did great at the end. I made All-American, that, that was like, I feel like my whole college career of like achieving like picks, pass the flesh and lead, all that stuff. I feel like that was my greatest is being an All-American. Man, that, that is huge. You know, and from a, a small town kid coming from Mobile, Alabama, man, that's huge. You know, that's huge for his family. That's huge for him. And Auburn has always had some pretty good cornerbacks, but to put up the numbers and produce and do what he's done, uh, the last player that I could probably remember doing that is Carlos Rogers. He's up in the top tier of being one of the, the greatest uh, defensive backs that ever been through Auburn University, and that's testament to who he is and what he's done over his time being here. So, Roger, um, how did you like your four years at Auburn? Um, it was great. I mean, had a little ups and downs and everything, but I had good memories. There were some bad memories, but good friends and everything. Family down, you know, always at home when I go back. So I, I was great. It was great four years at Auburn. That's pretty nice. Uh, how much do you like Smoke Monday? Yeah, all right. Okay. Talking a little trash on the field? Yeah, we get it. Trashing the state with litter? That's terrible. Keep it clean. Keep Alabama beautiful.